talk about the psychedelic effects of mushrooms. This is the psilocybin cubensis. It's a mushroom that contains psilocybin. Psilocybin is a natural chemical that is very similar to serotonin, which is a uh, neurotransmitter in our brains. Here's a, an overview of historic examples of uh, mushroom use, both in the church and also in ancient cultures like Mexico and uh, other places of Earth. Actually, all over the world, mushrooms have been used for religious or spiritual purposes. This is an, uh, an image made by Alex Gray. It uh, shows a uh, Neanderthal man uh, taking his first mushroom. Uh, this is based on the stoned ape theory of Terence McKenna. Here's an example of what you might see if you take a high dose of uh, these mushrooms. If you take a low dose, it's pretty funny. You get weird thoughts and um, maybe some changing patterns. But if you take a high dose, you know, the whole vision can be full of flames and such. Here are some examples of uh, uh, paintings from, uh, from uh, psych psychological uh, usage of these uh, mushrooms and other psychedelics. And they can be pretty scary sometimes. Uh, but they can also be oceanic, as you saw in the lower uh, left corner. Here's an example of a meditative experience in which uh, all boundaries disappear and uh, what comes to the front are the different grids of energy that are in the body and around it. And this is also by Alex Gray. Here's another image by Alex Gray. It shows a uh, pretty deep uh, spiritual experience that is uh, actually available to all of us. You don't need to be a great expert at meditation. All you need to do is have some hours available and take a high dose in, the, in darkness and silence. Here are more uh, paintings. Um, these are all kinds of, of course, there's a, a little bit of fancy of, of the painter himself. But these kind of colors and these kind of patterns uh, are, are what you regularly see when you take a high dose of uh, psilocybin. Here are two columns. On the left side, you see the, the, the left brain and the the material aspect of existence, and on the right side, there's the spiritual side of existence. Uh, I could give a lecture about, of about two hours about all of this, but I have to be very quick now. Um, okay. There's also lots of books written about this subject, both about the historic and about the spiritual aspects, and about the cultural aspects, which we will discuss in a minute. And these are the beautiful psilocybin mushrooms that you can grow in your own home. Um, here's some more scientific uh, ideas. Uh, here you see that this curve shows uh, the, the amount of time that you're usually tripping. It's about four to six hours uh, is the peak, and then there are some after effects of half an hour. These are different grids and, and patterns that you could see. Um, psilocybin over here, it's very similar to serotonin, and it's also very similar to DMT and to LSD, which is shown here. All these substances are in the kind of same category. And they're non-toxic, they only give you an amazing experience. Uh, here are some examples from Greek culture, uh, from Hellenistic culture, from the, uh, the Mysteries of Lucis. Uh, this was a very uh, popular yearly festival for all the philosophers and great minds of, that gave rise to uh, Western civilization. Here's the recent, the recent um, impact of psychedelics. Of course, the hippies in the 60s, who discovered LSD and a little bit later the mushrooms. And more uh, recent festivals, Boom Festival, Burning Man, and here you see uh, uh, Azora. These are the most used um, magic mushrooms. These are actually a different class of mushrooms, and they don't give a strong effect. But those are the Liberty Caps, and these are the uh, Sclerotia, or the uh, Truffles, and they are still legal. Uh, the ones on the left are illegal, officially. Uh, this is from the 50s. Uh, a banker named Gordon Wasson, he uh, went to Mexico and was the first white man, the first Westerner, to uh, have the experience of, uh, of these mushrooms. And Terence McKenna, he went to the Amazon and he discovered them in a cow pie. And, and this is me. Uh, a, a certain TV uh, station wanted to uh, film somebody who was tripping, and I, I said, okay, let's do that. <laughs> so I took them to a smart shop in Amsterdam, to Cocopelli, and uh, took a, quite a nice dose and had a great time. Um, a little bit about the war on drugs. Over here, you can't really see it, but these are mushrooms. They're very, very safe and uh, alcohol is all the way on the left, just for a comparison. Uh, just say no, it doesn't work that way. Here's some more psychedelic art. This is inspired by peyote. There's a certain cactus on the left side. There's uh, a vision by a, um, a shaman uh, who used uh, ayahuasca, which is similar in effect. And here is another modern uh, painting. And this one is also a modern psychedelic uh, painting by Alex Gray, which shows the kind of experiences, uh, experiences you should have <coughs> 
really not much time to discuss all this. But um, yeah, it's uh, illuminating. <laughs> okay, thank you. Because Terence McKenna was up there, mm -hmm. could you, for the people who don't know him, explain a, a little bit about him? Yeah, he's often referred to as an Irish bard, uh, because he, he used to talk for hours, and he, uh, he was very much into uh, media, and uh, for example, uh, Marshall McLuhan, uh, the media is the message, he was very much a fan of him. Uh, in general, an intellectual with a wide range of interests, uh, and a pretty speculative mind, but he produced some very, very interesting uh, theories, like the stone ape theory. What is that? Stone age theory is as, is as follows. If you take a low dose of uh, psychedelics, specifically uh, psilocybin, you actually get more uh, sharp vision. And I'm talking about a very low dose, below the, the, the psychedelic dose. If you take a slightly higher dose, you get horny. And you know, it's really good for, for example, orgies and stuff like that. If you take an even higher dose, you get a religious experience. And all these different uh, experiences could have really aided in the uh, in the evolution of mankind and its um, uh, process of going from the, the, the woodlands into the civilized culture. That's the Stone Age theory They're in a nutshell. Very useful. Yes, they can be very, very useful. And they have been very useful uh, in our uh, society. So we're descendants of stone apes, not just apes? Perhaps, it's a theory. <laughs> but uh, we were definitely descendants of people who have been tripping. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs>